Okay. Well, um, so from last week, um, most of the doc items were, were about the new release and versus um, previously, a lot of it was focused on the glossary. <clears throat> and I think there's quite a few folks that aren't available today. Frederick may be joining here in a few minutes, um, can give an update. But Nikolai and um, several of the other people that had action items aren't available. Um, we can go ahead, though. Does Jeff, Joel, anybody else have any specific topics they'd like to go over? Otherwise, I'll just try to work through what we had. Okay. So the quick start guide, that's related to Nikolai. I don't think um, there's anything updated that I know of. On the release notes, um, we're looking at what items <clears throat> would be available in the for the new release. And I think Fred, that's a, another item between Frederick and Nikolai. Let's see what we have here. Landing page, that actually doesn't have anybody. So we may be looking for assistance on that. Videos and persona. Oh, there's Frederick. Hey, Fred. Hello. It's pretty light today. So as far as like folks who could speak to action items, Nikolai's out. I don't know what's been done there. Um, we don't have anybody that's picked up anything specifically on the quick start guide and the different pieces other than Nikolai on the SDK. And he's not here. Um, it's almost, it kind of feels like we should have canceled today with so many people out. But do you have anything do you want to specific to speak to? The release um, notes, I think, were action items. Yeah, so the re release notes are something I'm working on. Um, I don't have anything to show for it just yet. Uh, I will have something for, for next week on the release notes, um, especially since we have, you know, we're we're coming up to the end of the uh, of the cycle. So, in terms of um, in terms of getting uh, of getting started, uh, or rather, quick start documents. Um, so Nikolai and I have been working on our presentation for KubeCon, and uh, one of the things that's occurred to me is that we're probably right now. I, I think we're only going to focus on like the gen generic quick start on like how do you get something running. But it also occurred to me that having some form of a quick start if you're a CNF developer uh, trying to write something on Kubernetes would also be useful as well. And so the, the documentation that we come up with, or rather the, the, the presentation we, we come up with on that uh, after KubeCon, we can use to seed that particular document as well. Um, but other than that, I don't, I, I don't have a Nikolai status, so I, I don't know how, how things are on the, on the generic quick start at this point. Cool. Um, well, you can put that in there as far as like uh, idea is what it sounds like. Um, nothing started and maybe post KubeCon for CNF developer. Sounds good as a, another additional persona, basically. Yeah, and that's uh, that's actually how I'm trying to drive it in this scenario is like a, similar to the Sarah use case. Uh, mm -hmm. Picks to pick a narrative of of a, a person who wants to create a um, 
a CNF on that, that runs within Kubernetes, and then the challenges that the person runs to with privileges, with, uh, with a lack of, of APIs and so on, and then gets introduced to Ariadne, who then makes it uh, um, easier to cope with. Sounds good. Having a story is helpful. Um, let's see. The alternative messaging for what is in SIM and who is it for seems related to this. Um, do you have any idea if um, that's any progress on that, both for the repo as well as the Network Service Mesh website. So, you know, I, I don't have any insight onto that at the moment. I'm just going to pull it up so that we don't lose it. On the videos um, per persona, there's going to be two parts. One kind of a write-up that's uh, the script be related to what we're talking about. This would lead to those videos, sketch, sketch note type videos and stuff that you've been doing, Watson. Um, do you have any update on this? Yeah, I was probably not going to be able to start on that until next week. And it would be nice to, um, I know, I think Josh is on the line. It'd be nice if we went through and installed an asylum on packet and you can get a kind of feel of what documentation is currently there and then trying to uh, make it more concise for a video or write a script for it at least. Would you like some either feedback or help from anyone else? I don't know if like Frederick, if you'd be available for speeding that up. Initial setup and walkthrough with the current code base. Watson, or are you wanting to go through it yourself and see how it is? I know um, Josh wanted to help out with this, so. Um, Fred, what would be minimum requirements for a system? If we're gonna say spin up a clean system on packet for doing an install, and trying to come at it as from a new user perspective. So how to use NSM for the first time. And I guess another thing we ran into was there's building from the the um, containers 
the pre-built containers, mm -hmm. and then they're actually building NSM from scratch. And we went down the trying to build it from scratch and got got a bit stuck there. So I guess there's two. We probably need to get it. It'd probably be easier or better to do the operator persona first and build from containers and use whatever CNF is out there first and then we can hassle people for getting the environment set up for actual dev environment on packing. Yeah, so I think my preference for a quick start is if the Helm charts are already working to, uh, to go with that because that by far would be the easiest uh, approach. And so in terms of packet, I mean, it's primarily getting a Kubernetes uh, instance set up. And that's, to me, that's actually the harder part is how do you get Kubernetes spun up? And uh, then the second part is how do you, uh, how, how do you get uh, uh, network service mesh installed onto, onto that, uh, that cluster? And that would be the, ideally the Helm charts. And then from there, the uh, uh, we can then focus on how do you get the individual network services deployed, and ideally those should all be Helm charts as well. So we need to see exactly where we are, like if we have enough implemented where we can do that. Okay, yeah, then that would be, I guess, like we were saying, the operator persona viewpoint, just using Helm, getting it start installed that way. But as far as a developer, you know, having Go installed and how your development environment is for creating a CNF, that's another, I don't know if that works the same way as you're saying, I was assuming not, or there was some additional steps. And yeah, so someone who's creating a CNF, um, so ideally, my my hope is that we don't have to get them to to do a full install, uh, but I think we do at the moment. So, but we, if you look at the uh, the examples repository, those should should I guess you would say merely use network service mesh rather than um, rather than require like the, the Git repo to be like fully installed and uh, and. Uh, run the make files and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So yeah, I saw we saw the repo. There's two sets of instructions, like the Helm charts, and then there's actually building it. So we'll, I guess, we'll go down the Helm first and do the operator persona first, and then. Um, the CNF developer environment would be pretty um, broad. It shouldn't be specific to anything on NSM other than the NSM agent or client that you may build um, add-in. Like if you're using the SDK or if you're using the little agent, the rest of the environment would be pretty generic. I guess if you said what is the most minimal uh, um, CNF and then you're using the SDK, I, I would probably say focus on using the SDK inside of a container. And oh. that sounds like it would be better to do yeah. later after doing all the other parts, operator persona. And then in my mind, there's an NSM developer. Yeah, that's Someone what I was updating that. Yeah, so I, yeah, I was confusing those two. You're right. The CNF developer is, I think, a good idea, and that'll be go across um, both the network service mesh project as well as the CNF testbed initiative. Because we do need to test using the NSM SDK so that we can start writing clients and endpoints that can talk to NSM. But that sounds like the more advanced of, of the uh, three. Yeah. Well, yeah. The more advanced seems to 
me the NSM, if that's what you're saying. The NSM developers uh, probably should be done last, even though if we want contributions, it should be probably done first. So. So what I'm hearing is that there's there's three personas that uh, in the scenario that we're gonna that we're gonna look at. Uh, there, there's a couple more personas that, that we haven't that we haven't targeted just yet, but we'll eventually need to target. Which is gonna be like if you're a if you're a and uh, this is bad. Uh, Jeffrey isn't gonna go after me over this, or maybe he will if he listens in. But uh, like the data plane provider, uh, like how do you be a data plane provider, or how do you, um, or what if you're the Kubernetes operator who wants to deploy, but you're not, you're not the client, you're not the CNF developer, and so there's, and so there's a couple other personas which uh, we we can also eventually write about, but I, I don't think we should hit those at, at this time. And so I think if we focus on the CNF developer, uh, sorry, we focus on the client, and we focus on the CNF developer, I think we'll get the most bang for our buck there. And then for new people who want to develop on an SMA, of course we want to make that easier, but uh, it's, it's not a high priority in terms of like onboarding the larger community. Okay. What are the, from an operator persona perspective, there's multiple operators. What would be the top, um, the top one? And maybe thinking if you only got one done by KubeCon, then what would the operator persona be? Someone that's taking, using Helm to deploy a uh, network service mesh. Yeah, I think that'd be the, the easiest one, using Helm to, to deploy network service mesh and to deploy some network service endpoints, like maybe mm -hmm. VPN or, or some other similar service. And, they, and the users can then begin, they, they, they're provided as services for their, uh, for their users to, um, to use. Um, what what do you think would be most useful then for KubeCon attendees? I think uh, anything. Go ahead. Just based on the time, I think we we definitely need to have something for the for the clients. I, I think to be honest, the client one would be, and well, by maybe the uh, the CNF developer. Because the CNF developer, even though it, it's a, it'll be a small crowd at the moment, I think over the next six months, that's going to that's going to become a more a more hot item. And if we if we have preparation for that, it, this particular KubeCon, and I'm not suggesting we will get to it, but if we were to have it, if then as a as a stretch goal, and then I, that that means that any any material that gets done here uh, in terms of collateral or, or uh, videos or so on, I think would, uh, would, would be very helpful down the road. Um, Watson, do you think you have enough to get started with Josh? Yeah, I mean, we we just have to, now that we're focused on the operators, then yeah, we can get to a point to where we can ask for help when we need it. Yeah, um, I'm going to swap these around where it has the CNF developer next based on what you're saying, Fred. So if we have um, network service mesh going, 
ideally um, from the operator perspective. So it's been deployed. Maybe there's some pre-built um, tests, CNFs or whatever, a VPN endpoint are doing something. So going through that, Watson can work on making sure that works with Josh, getting it scripted out, and then um, we'll be able to have a video tied into that. After that's done, we can look at from a CNF developer standpoint, using the SDK to bring a build a client endpoint, a client and an endpoint. And at that point, it'll build on the operator persona. So you'd say, we have network service mesh going. Now we've built a new CNF, and here's how you use the SDK. We're going to deploy it to the uh, network service mesh enabled Kubernetes cluster and see how that would work. So it could build on the last one. And then the final one, um, at least based on what we have right now that I've written out is a net, uh, in a SIM developer, so someone that actually is trying to modify uh, in a SIM directly, and what would they do? What do they need to get set up in their environment? Does that sound good to y'all as far as like the direction to build from? Between the first and second, to put in a, do we want to do anything with a client, uh, a basic client? Like, here's how you connect to a network service before we jump into EC. So would that be a pre-built um, client that could be uh, spun up on a cluster that already has NSM enabled from the first one? Well, like your audio is cutting out, just, Fred. Uh, your audio. Let me see if I can. can you say it again? I'm not hearing anything now, if anybody's saying anything. Fred was uh, reconnecting his audio. Fred, do you want to try again? See if the audio works. Okay, he's dropped completely. Maybe he'll come back. Oh, there he is. Video and audio again. Uh, Fred? Are, you able to, are you able to hear me now? I can hear you. So you were talking about the client connecting to NSM, which is between the operator um, and a CNF developer. So how do you connect a client to NSM? So I think we just show the most basic version of it. Like so not worry about shared memory or anything like that at the beginning. Which is uh, which is should be quite easy. You just annotate the uh, the pod spec when you start up uh, with the network service mesh uh, uh, labels, and then the mutating access controller will do the rest and will inject the interface in. So that should be a that should be a very simple one. So just you know show the annotation, hit. Um, Apply, apply it, uh, and see the pod come up in uh, network service. Mesh. Okay, sounds good. So, Watson, eventually, do you have any questions? 
No, it's going to be cutting it close. So we'll do yeah, you, Eventually, we'll a shared memory one because I think there'll be a lot of interest there. Uh, but I think just even just showing off just the uh, the basic, like Sarah style, how do you connect her pod to the VPN, which is just the annotation. And so I think it's very, very simple to get started. Okay. Okay. Um, start with the operator persona, just getting the NSM uh, components deployed with Helm. And making sure that that can be repeated and have a script for that. And I think that's a good starting point. That'll make a small video. So here's how to get NSM running on a Kubernetes cluster. And that's before you have anything actually talking to it. And that'll be the follow-up video. Okay, um, I think other items like the glossary um, was deferred previously because folks weren't available. They're still not available, so we can defer that one. And that's really it as far as the items on the agenda. Most of them are deferred because folks are out. But I think we got through everything with the people that are here. Does anyone have anything else? Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week. See you. Great. Thank you very much. See you guys. Yep. Cheers.